you may be wondering where I am right now. Well, I'm under our trailer. And uh, just want to show you, this right here is my gray tank. And then these are my um, sensor probes that I replaced out. I'll leave a, a link to that video where I installed these um, in the description below this YouTube video. Um, anyway, that's a gray tank, black tank, and I had a flush, flush system for the black tank, and, and I just installed one on the gray tank, and I installed a valve set up here where I could send the water from outside to flush the black tank or switch it, and it goes and it flushes a gray tank. And this is located just right down by my um, drains here on the tank. So I can do it while I'm um, flushing the tanks out at a dump station. So in this video, you'll see how I did this step by step. And uh, also, I'll show you uh, some of the debris that comes out of the um, gray tank after three days, three nights of camping. And then you'll see, um, after I install this uh, on the gray tank, how it blasts it and uh, what it flushes out of the tank when you think it's clean. Oh, and also before I install this into the gray tank, I'll be um, doing a test on it to show you how far it sprays. I'll have it uh, hooked up to a ladder and it'll be straight, spray out into the street and I'll measure how far it sprays and you'll be able to see the velocity of it. And I'll have all the parts that I used uh, in the description below the video. So if you decide to do this, you can. So enjoy the video. I hope you learned something. Take care. I'm going to show you what the gray water looks like after three days, three nights of camping. It's about seven eighths full, almost full. I'm going to open the gray water valve just to show you how dirty the water is. So what we do is we wipe off the, all the dishes before we wash them. Make sure there's no particles on them. Um, but you're still going to get some dirt. Uh, not dirt, but uh, a little bit of grease in your gray tank that will build up in the tank. Let me turn it off now. And not, our black tank has a, um, a flush on it, so we can flush it after we drain it. We flush it out, and then we fill the tank, and then we empty it again um, to get a good clean, uh, cleaning on the tank. But uh, the gray tank doesn't have that, so that's why I'm going to install this uh, unit on the gray tank because I can just drain this, and I'm sure that there's some uh, residual on the tank surface inside that isn't getting clean. So with that flush uh, device in there, I'll be able to get a better flush on this tank. So you can see here, it's... Uh, pretty dirty so I'm sure there's a, a scum that's building up in the tank itself. I'm going to take you inside real quick and show you what we do uh, after we empty the tank at a dump station uh, we we put some uh, dishwashing detergent down the sink and run it into the tank so let's go inside and I'll show you what we do. So at the dump station after we dump the gray water we take, we have this container here, and we just have um, dishwashing soap that for a dishwasher detergent. We put uh, this in here. I just guess, just like that. We buy it at Costco. Put it in there, plug this off, and then fill this up, this sink here, and the other side full of water and then we when these are full then we drain them off into the gray water tank so when we travel this soap will help clean and break down the grease that's in the tank and then when we get to the campsite we have a little water in the tank which doesn't matter it's not too much and then uh, 
when it's full, we go to the dump site and dump it unless we have full hookups. Here we are under the trailer. This right here is a gray tank. And there's your uh, sensor probes to tell you what the level is um, in the tank. Here is the black tank. This is the water that comes in from your uh, flush connection when you hook up on your trailer uh, to flush this tank out. The, the water comes in here and blows into the tank to do a cleaning on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount one over here on this tank in this area. And I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna bring the line, take this off here, extend it out and put a, a it's a T here. It's a three-way T. I'm gonna mount it here so the water will come in to that T and then it can split off. So if I turn the valve one way, it'll send water around to blast this tank. And if I, and I'm gonna run a hose off the other side of the T, of the valve, the ball valve, and it will send water to flush this side and this gray tank. So I'm doing that um, instead of, you'll see on this, uh, this flush valve I have, I could, connect a hose right to it but I don't want to cr crawl underneath this trailer every time to do it um, to hook up to it I want it to be plain and simple also um, they sell a uh, kit that you can come and you can come out here and mount something out here to hook a hose to but and I'll put that in the description below the products I use and also that hose if you decide to do it uh, another way than I am but I like this way this way I just hook up to uh, the port outside, which I'll go to right now and show you what that looks like. Outside on the, the side of the trailer or on the back of the trailer, it could be different on each trailer, but mine's on the back. This is the port where I hook up my hose water to this and it sends water in there to that flush valve down below. So. The way to do that is you hook your hose up here, you drain the black tank, and then, then you turn the water on to help flush this out uh, and flush the tank out. And then what I do too is once I flush it out, I see less debris coming out because I have a clear connection on my hose. I shut the black tank valve again, let the tank fill up a ways while this water's running into here, then open that valve down below on the black tank and have a gush of water come out while this is still jetting inside the tank. And that helps clean it out. And I flush the tank until it runs clear. So now, like I said, I'm gonna have the hose hooked up here, this one location. I am able to send water down to flush that black tank. And then I could switch the valve and then I can send it into my gray tank and flush it out. Well, right now there's nothing to flush that tank out so i know it's collecting uh debris in there and uh from greases and oils and everything so i'm looking forward to doing this so let's go take a look at the parts i have um, that i purchased to do this here's some of the tools that i'll be needing and the parts i've purchased to make this all happen i went with this uh Valtura no fuss flush valve here to to flush out the tank. There's another one that they saw out there that has a, a jet action on it that spins and it it does like a, a, a turbo effect and sending the water all over the place but I've heard of those freezing up and not turning anymore so I decided to go with this route here. And I got some half inch tubing that I'll be using to, to connect the, the hoses up to this and to my valve here. So the way this works, water comes in here and I can send it this way or this way. And then I got the clamps to hold this in place, some black paint for that. I got the um, clear 100% glue uh, silicone to a Attach this to my tank. Screws 
for these clamps, cutters for this, some clamps to hold the, the uh, hose up in place, some hose clamps, some fittings here. You'll see me using all this. And then the just tape measure and a one inch drill bit in my drill to drill into the side of the tank. So I'm gonna get into the trailer and drill my hole first. Before I get to drilling the hole and stuff, I kind of got ahead of myself. I want to show you this here. So this part is the top. It says top. When I drill my hole and I mount this, it goes in with this in the top. It came with screws to mount it. You put silicone on the back and then you uh, cinch it up tight. So this thing has no hole. I don't know if you can see. See a little hole here? There's no hole in the top. But there is holes around it like that and out the end so it's going to spray into the tank it has this here it has a built-in check valve in here so um, the water won't come back from your gray tank out into your hose and contaminate the drinking water this here comes with this so if you aren't using the hose setup i am you would put this on like that they give you a quick connect. You hook that to your hose and you just connect this in like this, turn it, it's on, and then you can start blasting. But my way, I won't have to do this. So I'll take this off here. And this kit comes with that. I'm just gonna put this on. And then my hose will connect right to that so it stays permanently connected. I don't have to go underneath the trailer a bunch of times. So I'll leave a, uh, in the description below, the parts I use for this and where you can find them. So I'm going to, before I go drilling the hole and stuff, I'm going to um, hook a hose up to this and we'll see how well this sprays, okay? I have this hooked up to our household uh, hose. It's 45 pounds of pressure here. So I'm going to open this up and see how it sprays. So it seems like it sprays pretty well. It's spraying out there in the road pretty pretty good. That center one, let me see if I can uh, zoom in here and show you. What the center one is doing, it's actually doing a swirling pattern right here where the other ones are just squirting a jet out. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure how far that went. So this seems like it'll work. So I just measured this. The water shot out here. 22 feet. So that's a pretty good distance. And then I think it shot out to the side, maybe 15 feet. It's a pretty good distance. Distance. So some people might say, well, hooking up this way you're gonna have more volume going through this than uh, with the hose, rather than the way I'm doing it with the smaller hose. But in fact, I put this here, it's a restrictor to restrict the flow of water through here. So it's actually gonna be the same as what we, with the small hose I'm using compared to this big garden hose, it'll spray about the same. Here you can see the how much restriction I put on that uh, nozzle. And so this is what I'm gonna be connecting. And as you can see, it's a lot bigger opening here than it is there. So my flow is gonna be about the same as if I had a garden hose uh, hooked to this. And also, if you look in there, let me take this off. you look in there, you'll see that opening there is really small too. So I feel this will work just as well with my hose as a garden hose. So I'm on the, on the side of the tank here. It, the instructions say you can install this on any side of the tank you want. So I'm going to do it here at my um, exit port for draining the gray tank. Just 
just because I want the water to blast to the other end and kind of flush it back. And also it'll take the side sprays will spray my centers that are over here and keep them clean. So I measured down, it says to measure down two inches from the top as close as you can, two inches from the top and preferably in this location centered with this pipe. So I've done that. I'm gonna drill this with a one inch hole right here. Uh, this is slightly sloped at this angle, just a little bit. So it's not gonna be spraying straight across, it'll be spraying down just slightly, which is fine my, by me, cause it's gonna splash all over in there and clean the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this drilled right here. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. So to drill the hole here, I'll use a one inch hole saw, but I'm in limited room here. I'm at a big angle drilling in here. I bet you I could go ahead and drill this and everything would work fine, but I want a nice, clean, straight hole. Either I could take this tank out, which I don't want to do, or I can come up with an idea uh, here, a solution to drill it. So I'll show you what my solution is right now. After I get done drilling, I'll show you what this contraption looks like. I'm sure there's other options, but this is what I got laying around here. There we go. And the piece is still in here, so I didn't go in the tank. So I'll show you what this looks like. Like that, with a uh, nine millimeter socket, and then this goes in there like that. So I'll put links to these in the description below. This here, uh, this thing I have, it's for tight uh, corners. I'm able to use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this area cleaned up. Now that it's all cleaned up. I put tape here and uh, so I know where to drill the, the holes into this. They're going to be eighth inch holes to uh, take my screws. So this actually, that one inch hole fits perfect. It fits in there actually snug. So I traced out where the holes are. Now I'm going to drill um, eighth inch holes into that. To drill these holes I'm using, I have a short drill that will fit in here. Uh, with my eighth inch drill bit to drill the hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these drilled. I wanna try and get these straight because uh, the, uh, the screws, I want them to go in straight. that's not going to work. I'm going to remark that one out. Uh, I just drilled these holes in there. As you can see, I put tape around there to mark out where the holes would go. So it works very well that way. Instead of trying to write on that black tank and not being able to see where I got to drill, so this drill actually fit in there nicely. And then I'll show you how this, uh, this flush setup slides in there. So that's a one inch hole and it actually fits in there nice and snug. So I'm gonna get this going here. I'm probably gonna put my fitting on here and then I'll uh, put my silicone on it like it says to do. I'll show you how I do that and then screw it in place. I have this area all cleaned up with isopropyl alcohol. And then on my jet here, I've done the same, cleaned it with alcohol. And then I put, uh, it says to put at least 3 sixteenths of an inch of clear 100% silicone on there, which I've done. I'm gonna put that in place. And I, it says putting that much on, it'll ooze out the sides, which is fine. You'd rather have too much than not enough. 
the silicon that I find that I like to use is the Lexel silicone. It's it really uh, lasts a long time. So I I have a brand new tube. Usually shelf life on silicones, they say it's about a year uh, once it's been open. So uh, even if you had a tube that wasn't open that was really old, um, I still wouldn't use it because they don't they don't work as good. Um, I don't know if something happens in there with the chemicals or something it starts breaking down and it doesn't adhere. I have a friend that used the old tube and he regretted it. Um, and I've done that too. I had to remove everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these screws in place and show you what it looks like. I might as well show you this. I had to use a stubbier screwdriver because it was kind of tight, but I'm just gonna go around it, tighten them evenly until the silicone closes out, until the screws are snug, but I don't want to be too tight where I strip them out in the plastic. That would be a little bit of a nightmare. You can actually feel it getting snugger each time. So working my way around, the silicone is working its way out. And I can feel it getting tight screw is probably done. So now that's tight. I'm going to go around real slow again and make sure I get it all tight. I don't want it leaking. And just so you know this tank, I am doing this while it's empty because if I drilled it with uh, fluid in there it would have came out at me. So I'm just going to leave the silicone around there so it's got a nice seal. And you can see I put on my fitting here, it's a hose fitting to a uh, half inch male barb. So I thought I'd do that right now before I get into this uh, too far. Um, and so you can see if this was here and this was located right here, it'd be kind of hard getting your hose in here underneath the trailer to uh, or RV to connect to it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna like my setup here. So I got this a half inch uh, valve here and it has a half inch thread to half inch barb. There's four of them that I purchased. I'll have this in the description below where to get this stuff. Um, and so in this position with the handle this way, the water is actually allowed to go here and through here, like an L shape. See that? If I turn it, then it can go this way, like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my water coming in from the my hose connection this way, and I'll be able to split it off and send water one way to the gray, gray or black tank or the gray and black type tank that way so we'll get this installed underneath the trailer in a minute um, and I made sure I used Teflon tape I, I went on it six wraps around it so let's go back underneath the trailer now to strap this ball valve to the I-beam the underneath the trailer I have three three-quarter inch straps that I've painted black and when they're like this, the holes will line up. You can see right here. So I'm just gonna have to mark here, 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 here. Drill uh, four holes and into the frame and then bolt it and it'll be mounted in place. I've got this all marked out under here with the I-beam here. This is how it will go. You can see that I got the mark where the straps will be the little marks here, pencil marks, like that. And then this, I'll drill those out with a um, 1364 drill bit because I'm putting a 1032 screw and lock nut on there once I got that. And then this hose here, this is the inlet. 
and it'll go over to that point there. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'll connect to that hose there because that comes from the hose outside on the back of the trailer. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. And then over here on this one here, I'm gonna go ahead and mount this on there a straight piece like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those on and then come back. So you can see here, I got the straight one on here going to the tank. And then I got the uh, 90 degree clamped on here. I clamped it loose because I might wanna spin it around a little bit. And now I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole here. I'll go ahead and drill the other uh, three and then come back to you. I'm gonna go ahead right now, I got this holes all drilled. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this up in place right here using my screws I got. And I have uh, lock nuts too. I like to use lock nuts, then they don't work loose. Uh, if I just use regular nuts with lock washers, it's a possibility that everything might work loose from this trailer shaking. So that's the way to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on and then come back to you. I got this all strapped in place. The trick to it is to take these uh, screws and put them through the straps here that overlap each other, put them through the hole and then put the uh, lock nut on the back side, hand tight on both these then stick the screw here put the lock nut on get it started started and then tighten these all up going around it till they're tight um, it's all set it's nice and stiff it's going to work nice i'm going to connect a hose from here over to this point here right now so i'll get that started i got everything together in a loose fit right here you can see, put it on here, sweeped it around here. And the, a trick to doing a sweep like this, when they sell you this, it's in a coil. I bought it by the foot at a local hardware store, but somebody like Home Depot, I think they only send, sell 10 foot lengths, but I only needed four feet for this. So I used it to my advantage, the coil came around here. I have this clamp here, which uh, looks like this here. I like these clamps. So I'm putting one right here. I'm gonna mount it in there with the same screws I used for this location, just to hold it from shaking around and this hose from rubbing on the metal and it will keep it from wearing out. So I'm just putting everything to, together loose and then I'm gonna tighten everything up. So now I'm gonna do this hose, this one here around to this port here on the black tank. Now that we got all this together, I got all these straps in place, holding the, the hose, keeping it away from the metal from rubbing on it. Everything's clamped tight. So everything is good to go here. Now I'm just gonna run this hose over to my gray water tank where I just installed the um, flush valve on it. So I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see that part. We'll be taking this hose from the valve around over to the gray water tank. So this will be our last connection right here. So this should be fairly easy. So I'm going to put that hose on and uh, get the clamps in place and show you what I'm, how I do it. We're on the home stretch now. I got them, uh, the hose on both ends, and then I got the holes drilled for these two clamps. And now I just have to screw them in place. It's all done here. Um, I'm gonna wait till tomorrow and then run some water through this and uh, show you how that works. I wanna wait for that silicone to dry a little bit. So I'll show you here behind the scenes 
Here's my mess underneath the trailer of all the stuff I used. I put some of it our way already, but just thought I'd show you what it looks like. So tomorrow, I'll be back out here and we'll run some water in here. As you saw towards the beginning of the video, how uh, we put uh, dishwashing liquid soap in the sink and maybe about four or five gallons of water in. Well, we traveled home and I'm gonna take and open the gray water and see how it comes out. It comes out dirty. From sloshing around with the soaps and stuff, let's, let's take a look and see um, what the water looks like compared to when we first drained the gray tank. Um, after using it and filling up for three days. I'm going to turn it off early so we'll let it settle for a second. Take a look. So you can obviously see the dishwashing detergent in there, the color from it, the green. And I can also see some flakes in there of uh, food particles. So traveling with some water in there and that dishwashing soap actually helped break some of it up uh, that was in the tank. Let me see here. There's a piece of... And that looks like plastic. So that's probably what I drilled that in there. So uh, the hole. So that's actually plastic. But it's, it looks looks pretty clean except for the soap. So I'm going to go ahead and drain this and, um, and then jet the tank. And then come back uh, when I'm jetting the tank to show you what it looks like. Now that the tank is empty, I'm going to go ahead and turn the jet on that gray water tank and see what comes out of it. So I'll open the gate on the pipes here. And we can see some particles coming out of it. Quite a bit, actually. Let me move them closer if I can. Those look like a uh, some food particles and then also uh, maybe some soap debris plus just a slight bit of the black from when I drilled this here. So it's definitely jetting the tank, cleaning off some of the particles in there that are built up on the tank. Yeah, some of that black in there that's floating around is actually looks like fluid particles that have darkened up. I'm going to go ahead and shut the valve here and let the water build up in the tank for a minute. So it actually is cleaning the tank. You see the water isn't clear. I'm going to go ahead and flush this tank a little bit more. Yeah, there's all kinds of debris floating in that let me zoom in if it'll pick it up. I'm going to bring the camera down lower to this so we can see. Okay, now that we're lower here, you can kind of see the stuff floating in there. And that looks like food par particles that kind of um, mold inside, like some lettuce floating in there too that's darkened up. I'm going to flush this a little more, and then uh, we'll see how clear we can get this in the tank. So these buckets are maybe three or four gallons, and uh, what I did was I flushed it uh, about five, five tanks, so that's like 15 gallons of water through it, and then this is uh, bucket number six, so you can see it's a lot clearer. There's nothing floating around in it, but it was coming out pretty constant until uh, maybe the third or fourth bucket um, starts seeing it clearing up quite a bit. So I, it looks like to me, keeping the tank clean is helping by uh, traveling with maybe five gallons of water and uh, the dishwashing detergent in there. So 
I'm glad I uh, put this jet in the tank so I can make sure it's clean every time. Let me uh, get close so you can hear how loud it is hitting in the tank. The water is hitting off the jet. I'm going to turn the water on to this uh, jet on the gray tank so you can hear it. This is uh, where it sprays in. I'm going to switch around to the back side of the tank so you can hear it. Now I'll turn the water on so you can hear the water hitting the back side of the tank. Now I'll let you see how easy it is to switch this valve. Right now it's flushing the gray tank. Now water's going to the black tank. So pretty simple. Well, that completes the project here. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it. This, uh, jet that I put in can be put on a black tank also so if you have a black tank that doesn't have any jet I recommend that you put one of these on they're pretty simple to do um, I'll make sure I put uh, down in the description below links to the product so you can see um, have access to it so it's easy to look up uh, just make sure you price around you might be able to get a better price than what I show below um, Anyway, thanks uh, everybody for watching. I appreciate it. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just hit subscribe, the bell icon. If not, that's fine. Uh, the only thing is if you do that, you'll get alerts of when I come out with new videos, which I'll come out with quite a few more. Um, I have maybe roughly 80 or more videos and I plan on putting out a lot more. Um, so, Give me a thumbs up if you like it. If not, thumbs down. Feel free to comment, ask questions, whatever you like. I usually get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, thanks again, everybody. Happy camping.